let's look at one person who did stand up and then talk about some shittier Dems, um, which is Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York uh, had this to say, and it was actually nice. I know we had Elizabeth Warren being like, I'm angry. And we're like, oh, I like that. <laughs> like, I love when you're angry and you shake like a leaf. I'm just kidding. She's she's fine. Um, but here's Kirsten Gillibrand uh, saying what needs to be said. This is an issue that is defining for this country today. And if the American people don't stand up for equality for every American at this moment in time, we will be undermining a right to privacy in more than this context. Women deserve freedom and bodily autonomy. We deserve to be able to make decisions about when we are having children, under what circumstances we are having children, how many children we are having, and at what time we are having children. I would like to speak to America's men for one minute. Imagine you do not have authority over your own body for 10 months. Imagine if that decision making would not be taken away even if you would die in childbirth, even if you couldn't decide who you were having children with, even if you couldn't decide when you were having that child. I don't think a man in America could actually imagine not having control of his body, his bodily functions, what happens to him, and what life would be like for 10 months. It is an outrage that we have five justices on the Supreme Court who lied, lied in their confirmation hearings in order to be confirmed. It is an outrage that in America today that our judicial system is so corrupted and so politicized and no longer representative of the will of the people. Five justices said they respect president, precedents. Five said that Roe v. Wade was established precedents. Five said they would never undermine established precedent. It is unconscionable what this decision will do to the American people. Yep. And uh, they lied. We, we knew they were lying. We saw them lying uh, live on C-SPAN. Uh, they're lying about, I mean... You've got what are the consequences for lying? That's what I want to know. And this will this will parlay into your pay, Patreon, uh, the Johnny Depp <laughs> case, because uh, there, it, there, there, what are the consequences when you're found out to have lied? It, it seems like you shouldn't be allowed to sit on the highest court. <laughs> to me, I mean, you seems- you'd get fired for like lying on your resume uh, at 100%. this point. We, look, we've all been like, yeah, I have Excel spreadsheet experience, and then you're like in Excel, and you're like, what the fuck, you know? But this is a lot different and it's for life. That is a job for life. And they can be impeached, obviously, but the idea that we would ever have the majority's necessary, a filibuster proof majority uh, necessary to even impeach those justices is insane. And granted, you know, like (laughs) Joe Manchin voted for fucking Brett Kavanaugh, but other than that, like no Democrat voted for Amy Coney Barrett. Um, so there is, you know, they tried to hold the line. There was not a lot they could do. Um, but it's incredible to me that you're just like, God damn, you're going to let Mitch fucking McConnell run the just table shut on down you the whole government, so shut it down. Yeah. Don't give money to the military. Don't vote on anything. Just shut it down until they give us what we want, which is actual representation. Yes. <laughs> is to, uh, is well, because have these... our vote have a matter. This is how far out from reality and thank thank God Kirsten Gillibrand was able to articulate a little bit of what I think most working people and regular people in this country are feeling. But they're so far from the idea that they wouldn't be able to pay a fucking health care bill. We pay for their fucking Viagra. I know for a fact our tax dollar money pays for Mitch McConnell to get hard. I'm like, seriously, (laughs) this is the level that we, we pay for that shit. They have no idea what it's like to try and make ends meet. They have no idea what it's like to get stuck with a bill you can't pay. They have no idea what it's like to be, to want an abortion and not be able to get an abortion because of a lack of access or money. No, they will always be able to get it. And so it was nice to see that the very last thing before I bring Robin, who's going to 
she's she well, I'm very excited. But the Democrats aren't just um, terrible in terms of a, a message messaging and a response. They're not, they're not just terrible in terms of not not doing away with the filibuster. It doesn't seem like Kirsten Cinema um, is in favor of doing away with the filibuster in order to enshrine um, uh, reproductive rights. But they're specifically allowing um, anti-choice Democrats to continue to run and are supporting them, like Henry Cuellar. Henry Cuellar in Texas, um, who is going up for a runoff election against Jessica Cisneros, who is a progressive justice Democrat uh, on March, excuse me, on May 24th. Democratic leadership, as in uh, Nancy Pelosi and Jim Clyburn, are still supporting the House's only anti-abortion Democrat, who is Henry Cuellar. Um, so uh, da, 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 da. Henry Cuellar was the only one who did not vote for that Women's Health Protection Act. Um, and in this runoff, um, not only, sorry, so, so let's look at the endorsements. He secured support from the highest ranks of the Democratic leadership in the House, as he did in 2020. Speaker Nancy Pelosi endorsed Square in March, even after an FBI raided his home, which was connected to the practices of an unnamed U.S. businessman and the nation of Azerbaijan. Okay. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, the prospect reported, announced his endorsement on the same day as the FBI raid. The same fucking day! Like, well, it was... I already had the email drafted, you know... <laughs> What are you going to do? Um, and then last week, of course, uh, Mr. James Clyburn just, uh, you know, really putting his finger on the, the scale here against progress, no matter where it is. Um, House Majority Whip uh, would join him for a get out the vote rally in San Antonio scheduled for today. This was this week. So, again, this is an anti-choice Democrat still being allowed to run. And mind you, Nancy Pelosi for a very long time has said it's okay to be anti-choice and a Democrat. No, it's not. It's actually not at all okay. It's fine to not personally want to get an abortion or endorse a family member, whatever it is. You can personally be against it, but it's not okay for you to actively be against the like reproductive rights as they stand. And I would argue, and this is the last thing I'll say, it is on the Democrats for their massive failure for not having a plan of action to combat all the ways that we saw the Supreme Court justices being groomed to fill the seats that they are now sitting in. And also, obviously, thinking that, oh, you know, it's the law of the land. They lied to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they fucking lied to you because they've been talking about it behind closed doors for a million years about how they want to undo Roe. So what are you going to do about it? What have they done about it? They haven't even, they don't even say the word abortion, as Liz Winstead said on this show. Biden doesn't say the word abortion. They tiptoe around it. They allow Democrats who are anti-choice to run. And this was from uh, Heather uh, Digby. She writes in Salon that Democrats have never run on basically being more uh, aggressive and offensive on abortion rights, apparently because they felt it was a settled issue, which meant they could play around with it on the edges to possibly attract a few anti-choice votes without really putting much of anything on the line. They acted skittish about it and carried, and it carried over to policy, like the Hyde Amendment banning government assistance for abortion to the egregious political malpractice that led to the showdowns over abortion coverage in the Affordable Care Act, they have never put any muscle into defending this right that majorities clearly support. If anything, they have used abortion as a bargaining chip, giving the impression that it is an expendable issue they can give to the other side without consequence. Joe Biden was supportive of the Hyde Amendment. That is part of that. I mean, remember the entire, not only was it part of the ACA too, not funding health care, but then remember how uh, fucking uh, birth control became a huge sticking point with Republicans about the ACA. Oh, please, please. I'll do anything to be able to afford $50 a month. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I'm, so, I'm still so confused how they could be, uh, they are... Uh they don't want abortion and they don't want health care. What, what do you want? <laughs> what you, you are mean, you like yeah, the contraception? You mean uh, birth control? 
They no, they don't. It's like okay, it, even if we were in this universe where we're where like uh, women are on Earth to solely carry the uh you know the seed of men or whatever mm -hmm. to fruition, mm -hmm. fine. Even in that fucking world, where's the healthcare? Give me the free healthcare. <laughs> if you don't want that, all of it's always been a lie. It's always been a lie. Whatever the the reason that they're doing it, the, the, even the Republicans play. Also, not the Democrats are just like corporate shills, and they always have been, and that's why they're like they're it's they've just been around to hold the line to just be like okay well let's just not let the poor people get everything right and so yeah, that's Hillary why they Clinton will win oh motherfuckers you ran the wrong candidate and back to the old people thing last thing I'll say I do feel like Bernie would say something different in this moment in fact he has and I feel like standing on a national stage as the most powerful guy in the fucking country most powerful person Defend a woman's right to choose. Defend the right to choice. He's a 95-year-old Catholic. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. He doesn't know what to say in this moment. He's not supposed to, it's, he, he doesn't represent the most, most of this country. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.